Hi everybody, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I want to show you, you fans, how you can paint Gandalf from Lord of the Rings yourself using the materials and the traceable links, everything in the description. On the mic is my husband, John. Hey guys. He's going to be zooming in and asking me like our questions that you might be asking as a beginner and helping me teach this lesson by being a mindful observer because sometimes he sees things that somebody new painting might not know. I want you guys to grab your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at this watercolor pad right now. We're going to paint Gandalf. Let's go. Up. Come on. So let's look at the materials we're going to be using in today's project and how we're going to use our traceable to help us through the project, even if one doesn't draw. Because I don't want you not doing this because maybe you don't draw because, hey, we all love Lord of the Rings. Don't you love Lord of the Rings, John? Of course. Right? And John isn't really into drawing that much either. So listen, it's not cheating. And we provide these on the website. This is my Gandalf traceable. I created this little guy and I upload it to my website. And then you guys just do this too. What I do is I rub my graphite pencil on the back of it and then I tape it down with washi tape or some like low tack tape and then draw over those lines again and that helps me transfer the image to the paper. And I like that because watercolor paper can be expensive and you may want to work out your drawings on a separate piece of paper to put them on your good paper, which is what I want to do. John's, there's traceables all over the house. They're littered everywhere, John can tell you. Oh yeah. <laughs> I have this on a 140 pound watercolor block. I'm using Payne's gray, marine blue, titanium white, yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and alizarin crimson. And I'm mixing core watercolor and whole bind watercolor today. So it's okay to mix these. I'm gonna use a really soft pencil. This is my 6B and I'm gonna do some of these lines a little bit darker. And so the pencil is going to be some of what happens in my watercolor, the shading, because hmm. I think it has a nice look. Were you just do some what, pencil shading underneath there? Yeah, like, but a little bit, not a lot, as if some lines are kind of worked out in the pencil. No. And then some lines I'll work out with the watercolor. Will the graphite pick up and move? A little, but not actually that much. And so oftentimes I feel that watercolor and pencil are good partners. Hmm. So it's predictable for the most yeah. part. Yeah. Whereas in, you know, like acrylic, sometimes I'm like, oh no, it might possibly um, lead through the paint. That's not as a big of a deal in the glazing of a pencil. That's what I was curious about. Because a lot of times in acrylic, you say, try to use a watercolor pencil. Yeah, exactly. But in this, I think I'm just more wanting to like have these pencil lines show through not everywhere and i'm actually going to focus them to this outside edge interesting so i'm using the weight of the line in to create sort of a heaviness to the drawing and then as i splash like say this side what that's going to do is create a really beautiful effect i think people will be really pleased with and help your watercolors look maybe a little more advanced and considered because these so, are things that artists do sort of intentionally so i think this little part of the whole hat i may really go into because i feel like i love that little element on the hat and i just kind of want to work this area then there's a little spot at the shoulder i may give some attention to and just some thoughts about the fabric here but not too much and I don't think I want to add any more heavy lines than that. I just want a few focal heavy lines. Now, this just is on some. top of the tracing that you've done. Yes. Yeah, so I transferred the image onto here mm -hmm. um, using that transfer method. And then by going over it with my, this is a 6B pencil. Listen, you can use an HB pencil. I'm going to show you art materials. But guys, keep in mind, this is just me demoing them for you. And that way you can make decisions in the art store if it's something you want to maybe invest in. But you can also use what you have. It just, it just gives you options and information. That's all, that's all it does. It's not like a, like a prerequisite or on a class or something where you've really got to um, do exactly what the instructor says. I'm going to use a quill. What's, what's a quill? <laughs> this is a quill brush. And this is an Atelier Square Quill. So isn't this beautiful? I thought this was the most hobbity of all of my brushes. So it's going to be doing this painting. And I'm going to try to do the whole painting with this one brush, but we'll see how it goes. I'm going to come here and I'm going to, I'm going to work the hat out a little bit at first. So I'm getting my hat wet. 
like you do, but just mm-hmm. the hat, to sort of create a space where a capillary effect of the water will go through the whole piece. And I think that's going to be a very nice look. And I'm also going to add some of this uh, color down here. Does I, I'm about to ask you like everybody's here, but if everyone remembers that time when Gandalf was Gandalf the Grey, mm-hmm. um, before he leveled up and became Gandalf the White, we're kind of talking about this space in the quest. Before he fell through the pits of the earth and battled great demonic beings. Mm. So I'm just grabbing the Payne's Gray, and I'm going to just very lightly, using this brush, tap it out. And where I tap it, there'll be a dark amount of color, but it'll also, as you can see, bleed in all the places that I put the water. And that gives me some nice effects. And I'm mixing my Payne's Gray and my Marine Blue. Just using this nice little quill. I'm going to dip in water again. So the quill is made with squirrel. If you are a vegetarian, you'd want to use a golden tacklon quill. And some people are vegetarian. And so they would use a golden tacklon quill, wouldn't they? That's the one that I like to use. That's the one that John likes to use because he is a vegetarian. I'm just painting this color very relaxed over here. At the moment, it's relaxed because I have some. Some crazy arty plans I'm going to get into. I need to re-wet this. It's a dry day in the studio. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to paint in that white. I'm going to leave that there. That's a fortuitous thing that's happening. And that's going to let me come to the back of the hat here with just my Payne's Gray. And I'm going to let this darker color bleed in and shade the back of the painting. This is what you're talking about not overworking, right? Yes. That's what I'm always on about. You're like, you see it, but you don't mess it up. Right? I'm leaving all of that there and not painting into it further. And that's going to make it a better painting for that experience. I'm going to go ahead and work this darker Payne's Gray under the brim. I wish I could zoom in more to that. More? See the capillary that's happening there? Isn't that beautiful, though, through there? In the way that I left that white, that's important sometimes to know to leave something undone untouched in watercolor sometimes i think it's as important the untouched spaces as the ones that we paint in actively and the things that we allow to be kind of like the uh, on you know the enya song may it be because you know that is i think the official theme song of the fellowship (laughs) all you lotar fans are like yes or maybe you're hardcore fans and you're like no depends on i guess where you're at but I've been really enjoying um, exploring this fan art very, 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 very much. Now I'm going to come here. I'm not going to rinse up my brush. I'm going to just brush down this uh, cape area again because it all dried out on me. And this is why sometimes I'm inclined to um, use a better paper. Right? To use a better paper. Yep. So I'm going to just push this down. All right. Just zip down at the couch sorry (laughs) there's a background track going on that i picked up on i'm like what is that i'm just brushing this down and allowing this to flow through and uh bleed nobody needs to go anywhere near a sofa (laughs) (sighs) i'm just taking the darker gray as you can see and just talking about his now I'm going to just dry brush this here and let that be rough like it is right there because I think that's going to look really, really nice. Oh, yeah. That's cool. So now in his face, and I really need to rinse this out vigorously if I try to do his whole face with this, I'm going to do a mix of yellow ochre and quin- uh, this, the alizarin crimson to start the skin tone. And then I might add a little burnt sienna to it. You know, trying to ready it up because he is an adventurer. It's true. Right? He's an action wizard. Unlike Radagast. Well, I guess Radagast is an action wizard. Dude, He's Radagast. super action. He's just He's... not social. Well, that's right. Radagast, <laughs> my man. And honestly, given the nature of their world, I feel like Radagast, uh, uh, much like Rose and Bernard from Lost, get it best. So I'm just taking the skin tone. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Sometimes there's 
there's a character that understands its world better than the rest of the characters. Me and the hedgehogs will be in the woods. Now, I'm doing a darker uh, color here, mostly because... Uh-oh, I forgot my my towel, as I always do. Oh, so every once in a while, I can wring out my brush, and I use a towel to pull out the extra moisture, and this will help me lighten and blend it. And here we go. I'm going to get a little water on the tip of the brush, and again, I'm going to blend this out here. I'm good. I'm going to blend this out here. And John's helping me out, which I greatly appreciate. You can see the skin tones on watercolor are not as demanding for us sometimes as um, other things are. And you can see that I am doing a lighter value over here and a little heavier pigmented over here because he's a bit in shadow, right? You know, not only is he a mysterious figure, but he's a shadowy figure. And we'll do a little bit of lip there. And we'll talk about it in a minute in a dry brush, but I don't want to go too deep into it because, well, you know. You know. Yes. So I'm going to do a mix of the ochre and the Payne's Gray for his hair because um, that's a nice way to talk about graying hair before it goes completely white. And I'll do a fairly heavy, heavily pigmented and this is going to work dry and wet into wet as I'm going down. I'm going to just take my brush, different levels of pigment as I'm going. And like if I rinse out and go like that, then I can come here and just pull some of that out maybe. Yeah, that's just getting some different values that are implying his aged locks that haven't quite completely been transformed by his mystical powers. So the thing is going to be taking this neutral color. I'm letting the skin area dry and I'm just going to be taking the mix of this yellow ochre and this gray and start building up what we're feeling is, you know, the locks of his incredible long hair. You have always been a big fan of his beard. Yeah. You know, I, I don't know what it is. I think that I grew up in the um, cartoon era of Gandalf. This is true. I have to say some of that uh, what, rotoscope. What was it? That weird way yeah. that they did the Hobbit when we were young. Yeah, it was rotoscope. Yeah, it's definitely in here. I don't know if we have any uh, Wizards fans out there, but that was like my favorite of the ones. You can see as I'm coming back, like I can glaze and layer up. And this is going to get powerful real quick. Now... As this is having its first rest, I like to talk about like watercolor needing a rest. <laughs> I'm going to come in and then also uh, work a little bit on the eye. And again, I'm choosing to leave a little bit of this white that's happened here because I think it's going to add to the drawing in this little space right there. And I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush and uh, might actually use one of my... I took one of my detail brushes from my acrylic set and I've dedicated it to my watercolor set. So this is my three over zero round. And I'm going to get a little bit of my gray at first. And I'm going to come under here. And I don't want the eyes to be particularly intrinsically necessarily white. And if I, I'm going to probably put any lightness that they have back in with acrylic paint. Because it's just going to be, without frisk, it really hard to retain anything. I also have some white um, watercolor gouache, which I may come back with. So the first thing that I'm wanting to do is shade the eye. And here's a, here's a little bit of the white. I'll make sure I've got some of that on there. Of my white watercolor. A uh, Holbein. Oops, I made a drop. Holbein is one of the few... Um, Companies. There's a few of them that do a white watercolor gouache, and they do. So I'm going to come and just sort of work in here a little bit of this value while everything is dry so it doesn't move where I don't want it to move. You know what I'm saying? And he's looking a little bit alarmed, <laughs> which I actually am going for. I'm going to add a little of the gray into my skin tone to sort of imply more of a shadow. And I'm also going to take advantage of this time to maybe darken this a bit under the nose and above the lip. And I'm going to come get a little bit of the alizarin 
I'll definitely warm it with the yellow and I will just sort of maybe darken this just a smidge under there. So he's got, you know, lips, not pouty lips because he's Gandalf. <laughs> don't give your Gandalf pouty lips. Why Unless not? that's your style. I don't want to, I don't want to limit your style. I'm sort of just smudging this and pouty lipped making that sort of neutral and while he's having this little rest here i want to create a shadow and you may have seen me do this with my hat girls across the brow so i'm going to get just my gray glaze and i'm going to come under the brim of the hat and start to put this part of his face in a darker shadow see how we're doing oh yeah so that we can tell his hat is impacting him Otherwise, it just seems like, what's well, really bright and sunny under Gandalf's hat today? And he wasn't that kind of fellow, was he? Mm -mm. I'm just uh, getting more pigment loaded on this brush. This is a number eight round black velvet. This is a, this is also got swirl hair in it. You may, if you're a vegetarian like John, you may want to do a golden tackle on filament. And that is okay. They make some really good synthetic filaments these days. So. No problem if you need to switch. Just sort of also adding a bit of shadow under the hat over that, kind of glazing it in so that the hat is, see how that's really started to take on a life of its own there? Oh, I like that. So we're really feeling that now. I feel. And I might as well just keep this brush as I'm going back through uh, the beard. I'm going to get a little of my yellow ochre in a stronger application of my gray. And I will come here and I'll start to create these little glazes here that are coming down. And it's almost like a lion's mane, isn't it? I yeah, like it really is. I'll lighten some of it, get maybe more gray in it. So we're seeing the future of Gandalf the White here, but he's not there yet. I'm still trying to decide all the characters I want to paint in the um in this sort of completely impromptu like <laughs> Lord of the Rings thing. I'm thinking for sure I've got to do Gollum, and of course you know more Hobbit stuff. Mm hmm. Um. I don't know. High elves, probably. I'd like to see Radagast. But, yeah. I would, honestly, over a high elf, I'd probably want to do Radagast. Because he's got the little animals and stuff. But I'll probably get, I mean, everybody likes the elves, right? The people that have to live next door to them. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I promise you. You know. They were it, rough neighbors. <laughs> I would love to see you take on some dwarven architecture. Oh, that would be challenging. I don't know. But if I could make it a beginner lesson, I would be into it because what I think it is is like I think there's a lot of beautiful advanced fan art out there, but I think there's very few projects for people that are new to art that let them take their passion for things that they're fans of yeah, and express that in a way that they feel really proud of, you know? And there's, I got to say, like, I think fans are the best because they're the best collectors. A fan will support artists so deeply and so passionately because they love, you know, their favorite books and their favorite characters. And I always love when we get somebody who's been a longtime fan of something when they discover that they can make their art. Not that I want them to stop buying from artists. As an artist, I would never, ever encourage that. I'm loving that. You know, I find... I don't think we need to take it that much further, do you? No, not at all. Now, I'm going to come here. And I'm going to get just a little bit of my, um, this incredible marine blue. And I actually chose this marine blue because this is the color in my mind. I imagine that Gandalf's eyes actually are. You know, I, I find as we become artists, we collect more art. Yeah. So there's no real danger of buying less art. <laughs> <laughs> Those eyes really came together. Yeah, I'm going to shadow these a little bit. Even with the blue, I'm going to put a little shadow there. So there's an extra shadow. I'm going to get into my dark gray here. And I'm going to come up across the top of the eye. 
if you paint with me a lot, especially on the, um, and I'll bring some of this down into the eye, and it's going to get really, like, serious. And see how that eye just got super serious? Yeah. So this is when that eye really starts to find its space. And we start to feel his more aged, wise glare. So I'm bringing a little bit, what I'm doing, hopefully the up-close camera is really taking you on the journey with me. I always like to create like a little shadow under a lid because it creates one. And when you get those elements on a figure, even though this is such a small space, right? And it is, it's a super small space. It will make a difference in how that figure looks to people. And I'm going to get a little bit more of my Payne's gray right onto this little detail brush. And I'm going to come here and make sure that I've Talk maybe about, you know, his nostrils and down under here a bit. Let's add a little bit of a shadow into the lip. Maybe one here kind of before it goes into the uh, beard. I'm going to take up some strokes to sort of blend that. There we're doing. Oh, yeah. Now listen, micro changes on a face make big changes. And when new painters paint, they're concentrating so hard that when they hold their breath, so take a minute and go. And remember that faces are greatly affected by a small change in shadow. A small change in value can really make big changes on a face. And don't just melt down because What's going to happen is there's a movie in your head. Maybe it was the Hobbit animation rotoscope. Maybe it was Peter Jackson's. I don't I'm not great at directors. <laughs> More authors, right? Um, maybe it was his rendition, his vision of it, and those actors. But what I would say is, remember, this was originally an author's vision. And authors love when artists imagine these works Tolkien, and put yeah. ourselves into it. So don't put so much pressure on yourself to try to, you know, maybe recreate a director's version of a movie version that you forget that there's the reader's version too, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put a little signature here. Like we all love Hermione uh, Granger, right? From Harry Potter. But before she was cast, maybe we all had a slightly different version of her in our head. Yeah. So don't undermine your own version. I'm going to go ahead and sign that. This is my version of La Canda, right? Doing his little whole little bit here, being awesome. And I, I, I know I always do this after a sign, but I might, while I'm here, just grab a little of my white watercolor. If, no, forget that. That's not coming with me. I'm going to get some white acrylic. Where are you going? I just am. Where are you going to? Guys, it's just a really cool thing I'm about to do. Maybe it's a cool thing. But it's signed now. So I no matter how away. it works out, yeah. right? Editing could have edited a small, it tiny amount. See how little I got? Oh, no. That's and I'm going to just... Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I'm zooming in fast. Okay. I'm not even sure I can touch this lightly enough, but if I can, I'm going to give it a go. I see it. Oh, man. It's a big deal for me. I always do this stuff, and it's a big, big deal. Get that acrylic really out of any brushes. Don't mix up your watercolor and acrylic brushes oh, like wow. I just did. It's not good. It's, it's, it just adds a touch of just light to his eye. Just a touch, and I think that that's important. I think that that's a good thing to go for. Listen. Being a fan is amazing. Loving a property like Lord of the Rings is amazing. Being part of J.R. Tolkien's world is amazing. So we're going to go forward. We're going to paint some more things. You know, definitely think John's suggestion of Radagast. You guys can tell me in the comments um, characters or scenes or events that you'd like to see. Like, I, I think I'd like the Balrog. You know, there's just different events that happen. Build a Pony was a big moment for me. We all have different moments. <laughs> so... In the series, wherever it is, whether it's The Hobbit or The Lord of the Rings, wherever you are, anywhere in the map, you know, Smaug, just let me know. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in the studio really soon. Bye-bye.